when them friends that we used to do all the stuff for and not listen to our mothers to hang out with, uh -huh. when they're not there, our mothers do the time with us. That's right. Because no matter what, you know, our mother, no matter how mad she is at us, she ain't gonna leave her kid. That's, That's right. right. Today I want to welcome, you know, Mr. Andre Patterson, aka AI, aka that 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 dude. You know? <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah. welcome, my thank you, welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you for having me, yo. Yeah, thank you, thank you. No doubt, man. Yeah, we're, we're all about promoting formerly incarcerated men and women who came home from that journey and to branching off into a new life. Right, and doing something to give back to the community, to uplift themselves, to uplift those around them. Right, because that's what we're doing, right? We're changing Absolutely. the stigma that because you got, you were in prison, you're no good no more. And Absolutely. You be there. We're changing we're gonna that. Change, we're going to change that, right? Because we, we made some bad choices in our life, right? But doesn't mean that's who we are today. Well, Absolutely right? not. Absolutely we're, we're moving not. forward, right? And sometimes Absolutely. the best education comes from life, incarceration. Life experience. Right? And so when you're out here, we can know not to go back and how we can expound on that and teach our youth because who better listen to us than those been through who it. are on the streets that want to be like us yeah. back there. That's right. Tell us about yourself, where you come from, what was it like for you growing up, brother? All right, well, greetings. Thank you again. Thank you for having me. My name is Andre Patterson. Yes, Dre. Dre. Man, E, some guys call me AI. Uh -huh. Killer Crossover. That was the name that I got when I was 13. Absolutely. That was the I would you. That was the nickname. That was the first nickname as far as when basketball was concerned. Yeah. yeah. So Who gave you that? My man Alan Parker, God bless him, he passed on. Okay. But yeah, we was, we was young. He gave me that name. No question. Right. He was like, kill a crossover. So we get into that, but let, let, more about where I grew up. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, uh, BK in the house. Shout BK out to in my, the house. Shout out to BK. BK. No yes, my sir. comrades. Salute. I was born in Brooklyn. From there, spent my formative years, like you know, public school, junior high. Then my grandfather passed, and when he passed, I went to Long Island for, I say, about a year or two. I went to junior high school there. Okay. Then things happened with my grandmother financially, so I ended up going back. You know, okay. still a, still a young boy, but in my mind, like I could help my grandmother, mm -hmm. yeah. so I go help her try to help her the best I can. Absolutely. And she ends up, you know, financially things happen, she had to end up selling the house. Mm -hmm. So I went back to, you know, I went back to, um, before that happened, I was in, went back to South Shore High School. Yeah. Varsity, I made varsity in ninth grade, so I'm doing my little thing, getting my weight up, playing ball, having fun. So then we had to move. Now for a 14 year old, and you're in your neighborhood, yeah. Yeah. like I don't have no problems. I'm like, you know, like, you know what I mean? You're my guy. Like you say, we grew up aunt, you're my guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, but then that was a hurtful thing. I got to move. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, move, move now. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I can only come and visit. Someplace far. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to Long Island, which was a great thing as well. Like, you know, it's funny when in life, you be like, you don't want to do something. Uh -huh. But then when you do. You get a change. Yeah, once you get the change, you're like, oh, all right, this is the same. Okay. That's right. Yeah. I got two homes now. <laughs> <It's always good. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. shout out to all my brothers in Strong Island, because I went to, I moved out there. Shout I went out to, to Strong Island. I went, yeah, to North, I went to North Babylon High School. Right? Okay. And um, played basketball out there, the varsity team as well, with my brother, my comrade, and my co defendant Sha Reels. William Grant, shout him out. Oh, so yeah, shout out to Shaw Will. Yeah. <laughs> you remember yeah, Shaw Will? No question. That's, that's my bro. That's right. So from that phone, okay, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to hit on this question, I, 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 and I think I'm reading it between the lines. No, go ahead. Because I know you, you, you're speaking about your grandparents. Mm -hmm. Where was mom and dad? Oh, my mom, she, I knew my mom. We have a great relationship. Okay. But I was born, my mother was like 19. Okay. Still college and still so i guess at that time in the 70s that was what most families did mm -hmm. if that was the case grandparents yeah. take care so my grandparents took, took me took care of me right my mother was finishing her thing my dad i never met him okay, okay. i was okay. told he's passed on before yeah. i was even born right. so 
my grandfather was dad, grandfather, mm -hmm. you know, that's uncle. Right. He was the whole. That's right. and he was that's he my there. guy. Yeah. yeah, he was my guy. Was, Who I am today is because of my grandfather, Charles Lewis Patterson. Big shout out to him. Big right. shout yeah. out to May shout rest out to in peace, man. Absolutely. That's that right. Up. <laughs> so, with that, like like I said, my mom. And then as I got older, like before he actually passed on, I was like seven, eight. My mom, you know, she, she, you know, she got her stuff. She graduated. She. So by that time, I'm like, I want to stay with my grandmother. Yeah. So I want to yeah. stay with my grandmother. Yeah. So my grandmother, like, you want to stay? Let the them stay. Let my baby stay. You, you know, it ain't like it, it wasn't like she was like, yo, you can't have your child, but right. but he's it's comfortable. Yeah, he's comfortable. He's comfortable. Ain't gonna uproot yeah, him. we ain't got ruling. Right. So my grand, my grandmother, we did that. Beautiful. Me and my mother to this day have a great relationship. You know, with anything, she get me angry at times. I get her angry, but Absolutely. I mean, it's, that's, that's right. the dynamics, of course. And I and I and she told me not to get off topic. She told me I she I get her angry because I'm like her. Right. So we have this. Yeah, yeah. She said you're the <laughs> male. The yeah, 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 you're the yeah. male me. Your yeah. attitude. Yeah. I'm tired yeah. of that. So, like I said, that things went on. So we moved back to Long Island. Acclimate myself out there. Great. You know, my aunt had moved out there. That's how I would get out there. So my aunt moved. So my grandmother moved out there. Like I said, school is great. Meeting more new people. Yeah. You know now. It's crazy because not to be jumped, but the woman I'm with today was the girl I met out there. Mm, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, right? Wow. <laughs> I met her there. I met her out there. Around. And I used to tell her, I tell her, like, even back then, I, like, I liked you more than any other girl. Yeah. I don't want to say love because we was 15, 16, but right. I liked you more. You know, mm -hmm. so anyway, before I get into that, you know, like, stay on track, play ball, doing my thing. At the time of my incarceration, I was gradu I graduated. I just didn't make the cabin down. Okay. I had 27 Division I scholarships, offers. Mm. Uh, NC yeah. State, Texas A&M, St. John's, right? So I end up going, signing my letter of intent to Florida, Gainesville. I met Billy Donovan, okay, right? Okay. I met who the world know now is White Chocolate. Right. Jason Williams was a go there. I met him. He ended up transferring and going to another school. So, but just to let you know, I, I met some guys, man. And then even before that, we is a um, they have ABCD camp, five star camp, all them high schools yeah. that right. get you ready for college. Right. So I went, I, I participated in that because they get the like the top players out this country. Mm -hmm. So I'm in there with the other kids, right? Yeah. And it's crazy how maybe what three years later. After me incarcerated, and like I said, I add up to that, but I just want to say this. I see my man, Allen Iverson, number one pick, mm. and I was in five star camp with him. So, just to let you know, yeah. I was very talented, right? Because yeah. I'm yeah. with. Yeah, that, that, yeah, exactly. right? and, and Steph Marbury, right? Ray Allen, we was, this, that's my age group. I'm 45, right. 46, excuse me, I just turned 46. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to do that. <laughs> After 40, we all kind of forget. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I just turned 46, yeah. so I'm like, you know, and it's through the years, I'm like, wow, man. Yeah. But now I got incarcerated. May 5th, 1994, got incarcerated. I was graduating next month, right? Mm. Going to college in August. And got halted, got arrested for murder, murder, robbery, assault, gun possessions, the whole, the whole kaboom. Yeah. Right? It was so much that they doubled the charges. Mm. So it was a 14 count indictment that I was indicted for, but it truthfully was only four crimes. Right. What they did was reword the same charge to make it look like something different. Mm -hmm. We know those who's pretty familiar with the law, like us, unfortunately, through our situation, we okay. know we, they call that multiplicious, du duplicious indictments. Okay. In layman's term, they would call it a fishnet indictment. Yeah. You know, ain't too many things get through a fishnet. Yeah. To confuse the jury and everybody involved. Exactly. Right? You can't convict on get one on another. Something. Exactly. Down, exactly. You're going to get no, it, 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 the uh, judicial fuck. Exactly. That's what it is. So me being ignorant to that side of the law, mm -hmm. I don't, I understand, but I don't understand. Like, yo, all right, we got arrested. And they lied to us at that time. We got arrested in Brentwood, Long Island, going to play basketball after school, you know, do our thing. And they said it was a stolen car. Mm. 
So it goes from a stolen car to murder, robberies. Right? So I'm like, are you wild? Are you bugging out? Like, what do you... So, it's still no evidence. They're not showing me, telling me, my friend, you know the typical, your friend said you did this. Your friend said... Yeah. I said, my friend ain't telling you I did anything because I didn't do anything. Right. So he's lying. So they said, I wish your phone number. And this is the, well, I shouldn't say funny because it ended up having me doing time. Not, this wasn't the thing, but it was funny because when I gave them my number, the police officers kind of like took it back. I gave them my number. They said, who's this? I said, it's my grandmother. What's your address? I gave them King's County address in Brooklyn. My address, my, you know what I'm saying? Because address? we still, the, the house that my grandmother sold, it was on the market, but I had already went to Long Island. Right. So it was just being shortly sold. So we, like I said, she sold the house. Mm -hmm. So when I get the guy, the officer, and his name was Vincent O'Leary. You know, certain things in life you just never yeah. forget. Vincent O'Leary told me, he said, well, Mr. Patterson, you asshole. He said, this is Suffolk County. You are now in the wrong county if you gave us a Kings County address. So I'm like, what's that supposed to mean? He said, you're going to learn. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, cool. So now I'm like, nah, he bugging out. That's a whole, that's a whole threat right there. What you yeah, mean to learn? So now I'm like, hold up, I'm gonna give you another number, officer. He said, oh, you wanna give me another number? I said, yeah, give me, I'm gonna give you another number. This is what I'm saying. This is where he got taken aback. And I didn't even give this to you. I'm just, I'm, I wanted to wait and give it to you now. I gave him my aunt's number. I told, remember I told you my aunt lived in Long Island. Yeah. She was a New York City police officer. Yeah. So when I gave him a cop's number, and I, I played myself, because I gave, that's why I learned, this we learned when we were young, not to talk so much. Because mm -hmm. I gave him the number and didn't let him call. He said, who's that? That's my aunt. I said, oh, oh, and she's a New York City police officer, so make sure you call her. Yeah. He was like, he, he like, because you, now you know, if you call this cop, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this cop is my relative, yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to get off, right. but you ain't going to do certain things. Right. Certain yeah. illegal activities that the police officers do inside the interrogation rooms That's will right. not be done. Absolutely. Because now you call this cop. This yeah. cop is my mother's baby sister. So it's a whole, yeah. our, it's not like my distant aunt. Absolutely. This is my aunt that named me. That's right. <laughs> she gave my mother the name. Yeah. Name him this. So they didn't call her. So we in the interrogation room and I'm still asking them. So you ain't called my aunt? She ain't get here yet? Because I'm thinking, because if you tell her I'm in this, Precinct? Yeah, she's, she's there. Through. She's right. there. Right? So, fast forward, they didn't call, they didn't call her. And it's crazy because now I'm in interrogation room. I'm, and I'm talking smack to them. I'm talking shit to them. Because right. they, they, dude got my sneakers off. He got me handcuffed to the chair. He slapped me in the back of my head. You could sign a statement. I'm like, what? you? So now he got me to like, I said, yo, you slap me again, man. I'm going to kill you, man. He said, what? You're threatening a cop? I said, no, I'm threatening the person. Slap me. I don't know who you are, what you're doing, but don't slap me, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't care if I'm 17, 16. There's certain things you don't do. Right. Like, you know. So he said, what are you going to do? Uh, I said, listen, call my aunt. We're going to straighten all this out. You don't want to call her. So they ran down you know, my whole family structure, who I was raised. But it's just like you guys just asked me. I mentioned my grandfather. My grandfather also was a New York City police officer. Right? He passed on in 1990, 1990, I'm about to say one, 1990, January 19th, just was the anniversary he passed. Okay. So when he, when he is new, so now they ran down, and I didn't learn, I learned something. My grandmother told me, like during incarceration, she said, you are your grandfather's dependent. You know, you were his child, you were his yeah. grandchild. Child. So he had you down as beneficiary for certain things, if, you know, right. through his pension. When your, your name pops up in the system, his name pops up. And when his name pops up, they're going to see what he did for a living. Right. <laughs> so now they see, oh, this guy got a grandfather's a cop, aunt's a cop. They didn't know my uncle was an FBI. <laughs> right. So I'm like, call these people. But they didn't want to call them. So they swept it under the rug, took me to court. I go into court. No, before I'm in the bullpen. You know, you go into the bullpen. I'm in the bullpen. Me and my co defendant, me and Sha Rills, and my co defendant Maurice, shout them out. So we sitting there, and Paul Castellano, this man named Paul Castellano, came to the bullpen gate, called my name. He said, Andre, Andre Patterson. I said, Yes. He said, Okay, I'm your attorney. I said, You're my, you're my attorney. <laughs> I said, All right, you're my attorney. Let's go talk. Because they just told me a bunch of things that is very, you know, 
<laughs> yeah, it's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. They went from I said they went from a, a alleged stolen car to murder, mm-hmm. robberies, gun possessions, assaults, all type of stuff. So we said, yeah, yeah, but you've been indicted. Yeah, you're facing 100 years and left. I said, well, I looked at my car. I said, yo, what the hell he just said? He said, bro, the motherfucker just said, you, you, you face 100 years and you've been indicted. Mm. What was your thought? What was your thought when they came in that room and told you, you know, that you're facing 100 years, right? After all of this that's going on. Like, I'm sure with the family dynamics, uh, coming from a cop background, right? What was your thought? What come up in there? Like, you're thinking, you know, they're going to make the call. They're going to call my, they're going to pull my name or they're going to see my grandfather. They're going to call my auntie, my uncle. They're going to realize, listen, I'm a freaking a rising star in a basketball, you know? It, it give me a fair shake. I mean, I'm not saying accountability ain't to be had if I did anything. Right. But don't just, you know, like you said, railroad me. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be- because you don't have anything, because there's nothing, you know what I'm saying? So my thought in, bro, in that moment when he said that, I ain't gonna lie, I really didn't think about it. Mm-hmm. I just like, when I heard it, I'm like, it didn't like, you know, yeah, just, you didn't really yeah, yeah. think, you just yeah. hear. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. like, a hundred years. So I looked at my code, I looked at my code and he like, <laughs> he like, bro, what yeah. the? I said, yo, what the hell? How you, how you get? And, and then, like I said, ignorance to the law on that side, as far as like the penal codes and all that, I didn't understand that I had every right to go to that grand jury. Mm-hmm. So, you really, they didn't really even have a grand jury. I learned this later on. Mm-hmm. It just was like, all right, he's indicted. And a lot of things that I learned through being incarcerated, and like I shared that with you, going to the law library, getting certain documents, freedom of information. But in that moment, and like I said, I didn't think at that second. I just like, yo, he's bugging out. Mm-hmm. Student lost his mind. Then we went in the courtroom. Then I really was thinking like, oh, they trying to bury us. Mm-hmm. Now, now, you know, you go into, into the yeah. court to be arraigned on the, on the, yeah. on the true bill or indictment. Mm-hmm. You're standing there. And I see the, the uh, person sketching us, sketching. I'm not even looking at the I'm looking at the person sketching us. Like, yo, <laughs> this is not a game. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't understand, man. Are you drawing? Like, what this? <laughs> so then when they read the charges, first, first count, felony murder in the second degree. Second count, intentional murder in the second degree. Third count, depraved and difference murder in the second degree. So now I'm like, oh, they trying to bury me. How you, yeah. you saying a person was lost their life. How is it three murder charges? Mm-hmm. And that goes back to what we just said, the fish that indictment. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So how was that, like, how was that emotionally when you, just bringing it a little bit up a little bit, mm-hmm. when you realize, oh, I got to, they, they put all this fucking, this time on yeah. me, like how was how was that for you? That man? Like, was that was that was the most gut wrenching thing I ever experienced in my life. Mm-hmm. And I've lost family members that I love, like I love my aunt who passed on, and that was gut wrenching. Yeah. But when they told me, when the judge, I, I'm found guilty of two counts of murder, which is illegal. I'm still fighting that right now. Absolutely. Right. I got convicted of two counts of murder, felony and depraved. Inconsistent verdicts, what they call for the people out That's there. That's right. That's what they call it. Verdict. Repugnant verdict. All right. The CPL law is 30, 300.40 and 50. I can go through Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So when you have repugnant, inconsistent verdicts, they nullify each other. So I'm like, they're going to make sure I go to jail. But it was so, it was crazy because the judge, once I got convicted, and all right, I'm like, okay, I'm 17, going to 18. College is done right now. So the only thing I'm hoping now is after this conviction that I get a sentence. I'm still gonna fight. Right. You know what I'm saying? But as we fight, all right, give me a sentence. So you can with, see some light. Yeah. Minor. So I'm thinking I'm talking to older dudes, yo, you're a minor, first time being locked, locked, arrested for anything. Your background, you know what I'm saying? Um, your school, you was playing ball. He said he might the, he said the minimum I was an older guy, I forgot the brother's name. He said the minimum they can give you, little bro, it'd be fifteen. Because it's murder. And he right. showed me the books. Right. He said, 
I wish I could say love, but this is what it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so now, all right, if I get it sent, I'm thinking now, now I'm thinking, if I get 15, I got to fight, just in case they don't uh, grant me appeals, mm -hmm. that'll be 32. All right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, Mr. Dan, 20s. If, um, but I'm not wishing, I'm just thinking logically. Right, you, you, you're playing it out, you're I'm playing saying, it out. But I go in the courtroom and, yo, and he read off the, what I've been convicted of. I remember I tell you, with so many counts, I got convicted of so many double counts yeah, to the same charge. Yeah. The man said 50 to life. Mm. He said, I sent Andre Patterson, I sentenced you to 50 to life. In my head, I'm hearing 15, because that's already, yeah, remember yeah, I just yeah, told yeah, you, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, that, <laughs> right? yeah. He said 15, right? <laughs> that's what yeah, you're yeah, thinking, yeah, like, yeah. he didn't say 50. The man said 50. The, the DA, her name is Georgia Tashemba. My judge name is Michael F. Mullen. Georgia Tashemba, the DA said, Your Honor, through my calculations, you should have 85 to life. I looked at her. So I'm like, yo, one dude said I'm facing 100. He wasn't lying. Yeah, right. <laughs> this man this gave me 50, 50. and this lady said, no, nah, that ain't enough. Meet in the middle. So I'm like, Mm. Oh shit! Fifty life. Now that was like that was gut. That was I didn't even look at him no more. I looked, turned around, looked at my grandmother, and she just like you know I seen her face. Come on, like, damn man. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. In my head, not that day, but now I'm thinking in my head. I'm going to college. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm about to go to the A. If I can't go to the A, I'm going to cross seas. Yeah. I'm going to get paid to play ball. Yeah, right. I knew that much. Yeah, so right. that's, that was your purpose. That was your vision. So I'm like, damn, man. I can front. I'm going back. I broke. Like, that shit broke me down. Yeah, like, right. Like, yeah. damn. Like, I got to go to school one day, went to play ball, and never made it home. And now they're telling me I'm never going to make it home. Right. Because I'm looking at 50 years. That's a lifetime. Yeah. 50 plus 18 is 68. Yeah. So you're telling me at 68 years old, mm. I would be going to the parole board, not to be released, mm -hmm. the acts to be released. Yeah, yeah. And the way the parole board give it up, come back in 18 months. So I come back when I'm 70. Yeah. So now, prison's supposed to be where if you do bad, you know, bad choices, you go and you rehabilitate, you grow. We know we no corrections. Yeah, yeah corruption. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what I'm we know they're not doing it, but through our rehabilitation, through us. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So, so tell me about that time. Like when you yeah. did get that time yeah, and you came up north. Like you know how some people they get it. Some people it took five years. Some of us it took ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we got those stories. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody don't it don't take at the same time. You yeah. know what I mean? We we have our you. growth and development yeah, process. Right. So when was it like for you where you you know sat back and, and was like you know damn I got this time like it's time for me to you know what I mean to Shit. grow and develop you know into right. that man. Cause yeah. it doesn't stop, it doesn't and die. and the streets are still it's there, still there. And, and that all of those you know challenges in life yeah. are still and then in there some. before. That's right, and, and then, then some. some. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you could speak about that, you know what I mean? Yeah. When was that time for you? So, how long it took? How many years before you began to say? I got the Green Haven in '95, August '95, and still have you know at that time '18 still had the immature, but I wasn't all the way. Like in on some bullshit. I didn't. I wasn't gang affiliated, but I was. I knew a lot of people. Absolutely. I mean, I didn't. I just, yo, bro. Even That's before I, even That's before, right. even before I got upstate, just thinking about the the sentence for that month, two months before I went upstate, was like, yo, what the fuck I gotta do? I had an uncle. I have an uncle who did time. So I used to speak to him. He's like, yo, listen, you gotta get your mind together. When I say together, you gonna go up there. It's gonna be a lot of shit going on, a lot of negative shit going on. Uh -huh. Don't get involved. get involved because you have a ton of bricks on your back. A lot of them young brothers that's doing the nonsense don't have that time. Right. They have flat beds. They have max dates. Yeah. So they can do a lot of the nonsense as long as they ain't a new bid. Right. Go to the box and still got a date. Right. You can't do that. 
because you go to box, come out, you still got 30 years. <laughs> right? So you got to get to the law library. So, like I said, that was before I got up north. But when I got upstate, got to Green Haven, I was walking through the yard. I'm like, damn. I'm looking at the yard, bro. I'm like, I never seen nothing like that in my life. I never seen a square with about 400 men just in there yeah. at one time. Well, and, you, and you figure, like, how everybody fit in this yard. With yeah. weight pals, benches, televisions, handball court, handball court yeah. phones. So I'm like, showers. Yeah, showers. All. You like, so I'm like, damn, man. I say, E, it took me about, I ain't gonna say years, it might have took me about months before I said, you know what? Absolutely. Because I ran to my bro Swells. I don't know if you remember Swells. Absolutely. Right? Shout out to Swells. He's about to go Swells. see the people too. When I Swells. ran into Swells, he was very good friends with my uncle. You know, from yeah. years, they young years. And he snatched me up. He said, listen, little bro. He said, everybody know you play ball. He said, play your ball. He even said, he said bro, smoke your little weed too. He said, nah, 50. He said, I did a whole lot of stuff in my life. I ain't never had 50 years. Yeah. He said, but prioritize what you have to do. What you have to do is get in that little library. He said, I work in there. And that's, that was it. That was the start right there. That was like, 95 I got out of state, that was... March, April of 90, 96, I was on it. I got it, you know what I mean? So it didn't take me years to know I had to man up. I had to handle my business. How long so, did you do uh, that 50? What was the outcome of that? I got a modification. I did 26 years and 90 days. Oh. Yeah, I did. Um, I got the reversal. Swells helped me with that. I ran back into Swells and Sing Sing in 2016. Big Bro helped me with that. Put the motion together. Same thing. The inconsistent verdicts. Wow, and right. now, it was a big thing, remember, with individuals' ages at the time of the crime. Uh -huh. Right? I was 17. So I fit under my mental culpability if I did anything. Right. You can't hold me accountable the way you would should and legally could if I was 27. Yeah. Because the human brain doesn't fully develop until 25, 27. 26, around that time. Yeah, so, right. so therefore, you charge an immature, ignorant child mentally to adult time because that young, immature person didn't really understand or recognize the long-term effects of what he or she may have done. That's right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, with Absolutely. that, now, they gave me my, which is great, I'm not, they gave me my reversal on that and solely on that. But if they'd have gave me my reversal on the whole thing, then we talking something different. Yeah. Right. Because now the well, indictment has to be dismissed. Yeah. Has to be dismissed, excuse me. Because an inconsistent repugnant verdict, only one remedy for that is to dismiss the, yes, the indictment. And left the DA 45, 30 to re indict. That's right. Which is impossible after 25 years. Because at the beginning, you didn't have evidence. <laughs> That's right. So, like I said, then I got that. That was 2018, April. And that was funny how I, how I learned about that. We put the motion in, right? Now, <clears throat> I'm on the phone with a friend of mine, and he's like, yo, we kicking it. We chopping it up. He said, yo, bro, I'm going to try to come visit, man. I got to um, take, you know, you got to do some stuff with his children. I said, hey, do your thing. I appreciate you, bro. He said, yo, oh, shit. I said, what happened? He said, yo, I'm looking at the, at the web, man. Yo, you can't go to the board. Why you ain't telling me? I said, what? Wow. He said, he he said, well, you got to go to the, I'm looking at it. Because my, my friend also did a bit, so he, he like, I'm looking at it. I said, what are you looking at? I said, you looking at some drinks. What are you drinking, bro? Like, you, <laughs> where the bud at? What yeah. you doing? He said, he's not my kids here. Seriously, bro, I'm not playing with you. You go to the board, January 2019. Wow. Your earliest release date is May 2nd, 2019. This is April 2018. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what are you, you bugging? He said, bro, I'm not playing with you. Wow. I said, all right. We went on. That's, that's crazy. So yeah. now, mind you, he's telling me, but yeah. it's not, I didn't get it in the mail. Yeah, how, they, how was that? Electronically. Like, they, did, they, did, they did everything first DLC, before I got all. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's like deliberate. Yeah. Yeah, DLC.org, everything yeah. right, right there. So I called my, I called my, um, I didn't want to tell my grandmother. I just didn't want to just jump. Oh, because that would have got her super excited. I yeah. didn't want to tell him. Really. So I asked my cousin. I called my cousin and asked him. He looked on it. He looked on the thing. And he was like, oh, man, hell yeah. 
He said, yo, bro, why you got, why you, why you, you ain't tell grandma? I said, I didn't know. Somebody just yeah. told me. You yeah. serious? He said, bro, January, you go, it says parole hearing. May 2nd, earliest release date. I said, get the fuck. I go tell Swells. He like, what? I said, yo, bro, that's what my people tell me. He said, all right, listen, we're going to hold on to that. We're going to think, consider it done. Until we get that paper with the seal on it. Yeah. He said, but if you see that, yeah, he said, because computer could be a glitch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The next day, the next, next day, day, legal now. Just come out. I'm in Sing Sing. Somebody I, know you looking for him. Yeah. Wow. They know yeah. he's checking on this stuff. And uh, <laughs> the next day, yeah. legal mail. Patterson, I said, yes. He said, you got legal mail. I get it. I, I'm, I'm thinking about what was told me, but then I know the system now. Right. I've been in this. I've been in this for twenty plus Long years. Long enough. I know what, the what are your feelings? Though? What are your emotions? Like, even when from that phone call that someone told My you emotions. that you sitting there, you like, well, was, I, why is you fucking with me right now? Like, you it, know what I'm saying? My like, emotions were all over the place because as we had, remember we were speaking earlier about that faith, that, that and hope, that hope. Mm -hmm. Even when the darkest of the dark, you have that little bit of faith. Mm -hmm. So that faith I had kind of got more just by hearing people that I trust. Right. Because I'm like, mm -hmm. even though I was saying that, like, yo, you bugging. Yeah. They wouldn't just have told me that. Right, they wouldn't play with your emotions. Yeah, not that. Like that. Not, yeah. Not, not, that's not, not, not in that. Not, you know, there's some validity. Yeah, there's that's, 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 that's some things you just yeah. don't play with. Maybe it's wrong, right. but he reading that. Right. That's right. I'm saying so. Awesome. So, so that, that leads me to my next question, right? And just how emotionally, Bro. now, if you remember this, Ooh. how emotionally you felt when you was released, man. Oh, release? Talk about that a little, yeah. man. Release? From all of that, from what we just spoke about, release, man. man. How did that feel? Just just fast forward Yo. to that day that in you single, were released from release. prison, single man. Words, in single words, if you can. Mm. If you can recall that day. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. That won't, because leading up to that day, it built up anticipation. Like I know my date now. I know the date. Yeah. So it was two weeks. Well, it started thirty days, but then it got to two weeks, and it like seemed for, for like the first time in my whole bed, two weeks felt like the longest time. Yeah, absolutely. Like before, two weeks go like this. You know, yeah, like absolutely. Oh, That's but right. now it's like hold up. No, no. Yeah, at the clock. Damn, it ain't time. You know, it, it, you know, it, it, the count. It ain't count. I'm waiting. I'm even waiting for counts. Because every count is the last count. The next, the next time. Uh -huh. So that day I made it, I got home. And that was crazy because that morning, I'm waiting. I get up, go shower. I get on the phone. Call my grandma. She said, all right. She said, I'm going to act like I'm young. I'm going to cook a whole meal. Right? So we, yeah. I said, thank you. Baby. So I get put <laughs> stuff on. Pack everything up. You know, last little stuff that I have. Yo, little, mm -hmm. Give it to the brothers. Yo, boom. I'm waiting. They told me nine o'clock. It is now nine fifteen. I'm like, yo, bro. I'm telling the police, yo, listen, officer. I even call you, bro. Yo, listen, bro. What's happening? Because <laughs> I'm like, in my mind, I'm not even an inmate convict yeah. no more. Yeah. Absolutely. I am free. That's yeah. right. Listen, bro. Can you call whoever needs to be called? Cause I'm supposed to be out of here nine o'clock. They told me that mm -hmm. when I went and took my photo in last yeah. call. Like, they said nine by nine o'clock. Right. I said, and then and look, oh, back. Back up real quick. I was part of a yap program with with Rad, my man Darnell, inside of Otisville. And the depth of security, her name was Miss Stevenson. She asked me if she could video me walking out the gate. Absolutely. So I said, I right, no problem. She said it was you know for transitional services, you know yeah. for guys yeah. coming in. This is to come in and look. This guy's going out. I said, right, no problem. And she told me nine. That's why I said nine nine because she told me nine. So I'm like. And that's why I'm kind of a little more assertive with the officer. I said, man, the depth, the depth of programs want me down there at 9 o'clock. Why is I'm like, what's happening, bro? I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, your boss told, like, you don't even know what's happening, Nate. Yeah. So the officer come, finally, it's like 9.30 plus. They come. And now I'm like, yo, what's up, man? He said, oh, I had this to do. I said, listen, let's go. I said, let's because go. when you when a person's being released, it ain't nothing else to do but to get him out. Mm -hmm. Then you do everything else. Mm -hmm. So because if I get hurt right now, guess what? Mm -hmm. That That's could be right. your job. That could be your livelihood. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here no more. 
Yeah, I'm off this right. count. No, ab- right. Absolutely. Just, so, for, just for town purposes, too, mm-hmm. could you talk about, you know, your release now and what you're doing in terms of this uh, oh, this yeah. organization that you... So we, we want to sum that up, man, yeah. and... and and highlight that because I think that's very important yes. right now. Yeah, talk that, about the Freedom and, Elite Sports Academy. What led blessing, up to, to that? What is your vision and your purpose for that? And out of everything, after doing so much time, why? Yeah. Well, Freedom and Elite Sports Academy came about through my partner, Darnell. Me and Rab, we used to be, we played ball. This so, is a lovely fucking name. <laughs> so when we play, uh, um, I love free, it. A freedom of league. Yeah, I'm gonna it. tell you. I'm gonna tell you. How, so as we used to play ball, we young and even remember, like our little times we used to be kicking them. Like and I had surgery. I had like five knee surgeries. So the times I couldn't play, I used to be sitting watching my boy play, watching dudes playing. I'd be like, damn, I want to play, but I can't. So I'm like, I used to be like, damn, Rad, what we gonna do, man? We get old. You know, yeah, like you can't play no more. Mm. And he said, yo, we teach the kids. So I'm like, yeah, and it's. Ironically, wow. I used to go on. I used to go on FRP. I don't have any children, but my little cousin, he used to come up there. So I taught him how to play through his years, uh, mm-hmm. from two all the way until I got released. FRP right. is the family reunion. Yes, program family. For those thank you for yes. expounding on that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, viewers. <laughs> family visits where we see our loved ones. Man. Yes. yes. So through those we make we make babies. Yes. <laughs> yes. So through those years, I taught him how to play taught him the reasons why you do certain things on the court, the reasons why you don't, you know, how to navigate, you know, certain things yeah, yeah, outside of the physical. And, all that stuff, and he got good. I said, hey, bro, you know, he got good. He got pretty good. Uh. So I used to tell Rap, yo, Rap, so we can teach the kids. I said, yo, Rap, I'm really teaching my little cousin. They say you're getting good. So I'm like, yeah. I said, all right. Well. And I'm like, the Freedom of Elite Sports Caddy, the name, because, I, and mind you, we didn't have a name. We just was talking about what we wanted to do. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. But I used to talk to people. Like, Yo, how'd you manage you the time? The what'd you do? I said the time I used to manage. I used to play ball, work out. I said, but when I played ball, I was free. Mm. My brain, my head. I wasn't incarcerated. I was playing ball in front of people. You know, I was in the park. I was. I was everywhere but there. Right, that's right. I had fun playing for them two, three hours. The brothers come out and watch, watch us play. And I have to say some shout out to my boy Prince Map. He said something yesterday that I never knew. Shout out to Prince. Prince <laughs> Map. No. Prince Map. Yeah, shout out, big shout Prince, out Prince Map. Prince doing good things out yes, there that's my in brother, the community man. and all that, man. He told me something the other day that I never knew from the reverse side of what I just shared with you guys. Yep. I played ball because I was free to mm-hmm. me. I had fun. I didn't, you know, camaraderie with the brothers, talking trash, you know, you know, the, the, the sidelines, talking trash. It was, you know, but he told me, he said, yo, bro, every time we used to come watch y'all play, man, he said, yeah, I took me out of jail. I thought I was in the league. Yeah. I thought I was in the rucker. I thought I was. I second that. That's right. That's right. Because <laughs> yeah. it felt like we was in real tournaments. Word. So I'm Real like, basketball tournaments when we came out there to see them games. <laughs> yeah, so that touched me, bro. That made me a little emotional because I'm like. Yeah. Thank you, man. Because I didn't know I was doing that for the brothers. I'm like, not being selfish, but I didn't know. And that's when dudes like, yo, bro, they did something to you, man. But something great is supposed to happen for you. He said, because you could have, the world was supposed to see you play ball, bro. Mm-hmm. The way, the way, and look, and then you just second something I never right. knew. Like, I didn't know that the brothers, like, yo, they used to, yo, we got to watch Drake play. You, you, never, right. you never know the that's impact right. that you have on someone. When you're doing something that you're passionate about. Yeah. yeah. While you was out there, yeah. while you was out there setting up in the yard, dudes was on the gate. Yo, you going out to see Dre play? You going to see Dre yeah. rap? Yeah, Hell man. yeah. yeah. So, no. so, and then, like, the free Malik, like I said, speed it up a little bit. I come home, and that vision's still in my head because I'm like, I had all that time, bro, and I made it. That doesn't, that, that, nobody's supposed to be in there like that. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, not like that. I, you know what I mean? Like, you ain't just supposed to be putting people 50, 100 years and just say, go die. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, my, my purpose for Freedom Elite is to help our young brothers, to help the youth, Absolutely. to give them our testimonies mm-hmm. of experience and let them know there's nothing new under the sun. What you do right now in 2023, I did in 1993, or a friend of mine did it. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely, that's right. And we survived it. And it's not glorifying that we survived it, but we did. Mm -hmm. But many have not. That's right. So, we you know, Freedom League is about teaching and training in, the, in, in basketball, right? The importance of nutrition, important training, you know. But that's just the carrot because that's something that we all love, right. most of us. Whether you can play or whether you just love to watch, basketball is something we have in common. I'd have had debates with people that, that said they never played, but they know everything about Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. So me and that brother, or we go. So I love that. Right. right? That's right. So when I seen that, I'm like, wow, all right. How could I? And plus, like I said, I didn't do everything negative under the sun, but I knew a bunch. You know, I, I did my yeah. little thing, whatever, yeah. and I knew a bunch of people. So I had to give back to the community. I have to help these young brothers because before I came home, I used to see the news a lot and the stuff that was going on. It was like, it's more highlighted now. I'm not saying things didn't happen back when we were younger, but it's a, to me now, it's like a little, a lot more reckless. Cause now you have young brothers targeting the elderly. Mm -hmm. At least I know, like I said, I used to see nonsense, but I never seen nobody target the elderly when the, I was a kid. The, yeah. the game, the game doesn't change, right? We can all agree on that, right? The lack of respect is ten times, yeah. ten thousand, right? Absolutely. Real quick, we gotta wrap it up, and then we can sit here and we can talk, Dre. Like yeah, nah, you yeah, know, what I love is the emotions that just came out of you definitely. right now, right? Yeah. Like that, that's that's purpose for me. Just when you see someone get some emotion advice. like that. Yeah. It's like you got a second chance. And yeah. though that the world didn't get to see you play, right? But guess what? They're going to see one of them kids that you teach it Facts. play. Absolutely. And when they come back to praise accolades to who was they coach or point, they're going to point to you. Right? Keep doing what you're doing, that my right brother. There, my brother is I, I would love to be an older guy and sit in court side watching the little brother that I help. How like, can people get in touch with you? How can people... Get involved with what you're doing to help spread awareness, to help make this dream come a reality where you're not just touching the kids in Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island, Staten Island, but That's the purpose. around global. the world. That's purpose right. is to make my model go global. That's my purpose. I want I want Freedom Elite all over to help the youth. Promote it, brother. Right. Freedom Elite Sports Academy. You can look you can uh, contact me at www.freedomelitesportsacademy.org. My phone number is 646-552-9519. Also, Instagram, Freedom Elite Sports Academy Instagram account. That's going up tonight. I'm almost finished with that. And we have uh, different events that's going to come up. You can, you can donate through the uh, website. You know, it's going to have a, information. We can put your information there. And like I said, I'm also a, a vendor for the Department of Education, so I'm able to be in every after-school program in every school in five boroughs. Mm. Nice. 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 Like That's right. Nice. That's real right. quick, real quick, my brother, you're going to make me tear, but real quick, what advice do you have for these young kids out here now that's not truly following their dreams and you know, touching on to their fullest potentials because they want to be blindsided by the streets? and these so-called friends out here. Well, let me tell you, you know, brothers, this, and you young sisters, because I see a lot of the girls involved in a lot of things as well. Mm -hmm. The thing is this, don't look for acceptance from nobody but yourself. Mm -hmm. We know basic right from wrong, young people. You may not know the long-term effect, but we know if you touch a hot stove, you're gonna get burnt. You know, we all know that's, that, that's slow mm -hmm. and that's saying. You know if you have a friend doing this, you know you're gonna get in trouble if you get caught. Mm -hmm. So you decide because it's so-called cool, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with everyone else. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you everyone this, that when that happens, and I'm telling you from personal experience, I know a lot of, well I know a lot of people. Everybody used to be around Dre, play ball, go to the clubs, all that when I was a kid. When I had 50 years, I didn't see a lot of, at least 94, 95% of those people I didn't see. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, <laughs> they, 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 right? That's summing up right <laughs> there. <laughs> like, like, listen, if we're not hitting the nail on the head with this right here, th th listen, right. This, this yeah. is, I don't know what else. This, this, is, this, is, not, this is not scripted. Right. This is, this this is, is what it is right here. I just want to say in one more thing. <laughs> yeah. When them friends, that we used to do all the stuff for and not listen to our mothers to hang out with, uh -huh. when they're not there, 
our mothers do the time with us. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because no matter what, you know, our mother, no matter how mad she is at us, she ain't gonna leave her kid. That's, That's right. right. That's she right. gonna do what she That's can. Right. Even if she can't come visit you every week, she's gonna have to see a little bit of money. The phone gonna be on. Right. Something. And that's another thing, real quick, damn, it's like I said, I gotta come back, but real quick, real, it's like, you don't wanna end up in there, young people, because, like I said, I'm doing way more speaking engagements. I know the brothers be have to, you know, wrap up, but when you're in there, just think about, like right now, on this Friday night, you just say, you know what, let me go to the store. Just get up and walk to the store. Get up, get in your car, walk, whatever. Right now, you got guys hoping to get out of a cage to get to a yard. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right now. Yeah. They're hoping. Now, what if an officer don't open the gate? Uh-huh. Oh, you dead. This is what you go through for 20, 30, 40, 10, whatever years. Hoping to get the phone. Asking to get a haircut. Uh-huh. Asking, can you go eat? Yeah. Absolutely. If that right there, and I experienced that for 26 years, this is the message that Wild Freedom Elite Sports Academy is there, is here. Because I don't have to know you to not want you to go through that. Because that shit is hell. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if whatever Absolutely. definition of hell that you have, the worst thing in the world a person can think about, that's what prison is. That's right. Absolutely, man. No trade, man. Yeah. For real, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, Eve. Thank I appreciate you, me, man. you, man. The growth, development that we went through, man. I appreciate it. Genuine you, and pure, man. Glad you, you made it I mean? out and that you're doing yeah. something with your life, man. Yes. I just want to shout one person out. One of them. Absolutely. Freemanly Sports Academy also really came about. I had to thought the vision, but I remember I told you I met my girlfriend back then, who's my lady now. Yeah. Dr. Melissa Ford. Got a PhD, got a doctorate, got a master's while we was all, you know, yeah. incarcerated. She's come visit from time to time. She wrote my business plan for me. When I told her my vision one night, we went out to eat, we just, you know, hanging out. And I said, this is what I want to do. She said, oh yeah, okay. All right. A week later, she said, check your computer. She, I emailed you something. I checked my email and I see a whole business plan. Mm. She said, I believe it. She said, you're going to make it happen. I like shout that. Out <laughs> big shout, shout out to Melissa. Big shout out to Melissa. Big shout out to those That's that believe in us, man. man, Dre, man. Listen. We're looking forward to the future with you, man. Oh, no and question. This, this is just no question. We're looking you know forward, me. man. So success after lockdown. We'll Absolutely. be at those games. Absolutely. We'll be at those events. Oh, no, they're coming up. We're going to find a way to... They get in contact and connect with each other, man. Absolutely. Appreciate your time, man. Thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you for having you, me. Thank, Thank you for all those percent. out there, man, that tuned in. To check us out on Success After Lockdown on YouTube. You can find us on Apple Podcast, Anchor, Spotify. Spotify. If you want to get in touch with us, please drop it on the comment line. Also, you can reach Apple out to music, us. Apple Music, yes, YouTube. You- you can also reach us at successafterlockdown at gmail.com. Instagram. If you know someone that wants to get in on the show that's doing something, that serves some time, who have changed their life around and doing something positive for the community, please hit us up, man. TikTok. We all uh, over, man. 2023 season two. We're here. We're back in the we're building. Here, Exodus here, baby. Transitional Community down here in Harlem. We in too. the building as always, baby. Stay up, safe for